Chimere is a distant planet. It is defined by waves of life brought from Earth and set free to evolve independently in this new context. The indigenous life of the planet, swarms of microbes called magic by the people who live there, are what harvest Earth organisms and make copies on Chimere. As the asteroid which concluded the Mesozoic never struck Chimere, dinosaurs remain the dominant terrestrial megafauna. Although it has long been noted by assembly naturalists that mylodont sloths, the wojun or red sloth in the tropics, and the katomotu or black sloth in the temperate zones, occupy most niches bears do on Earth, and that their presence is likely the reason for the low diversity of bears on Chimere. Many bears have been harvested throughout Chimere's long history, but the past six million years since mylodonts arrived, their absence has been striking. In nearly five million years between the sloth harvest and the recent Pleistocene harvests, there were no bears in the known world. Their aquatic niches were also occupied, namely by the semi-aquatic hyenodonts, which were more common and diverse in the polar and eastern continent, but a few species have found their way to the known world, most famously the mud bear in the temperate wetlands and river seal in the seritic wetlands. Overall, it is clear that bears are not well suited for chimere. However, one bear species has been a notable exception to this rule, the Uku bear. A close cousin of the Asiatic black bears of Earth, harvested around a million and a half years ago, the Uku bear is precisely what one might expect a successful bear to be in the context of Chimere. They are generalist omnivores, feeding on almost anything aside from grass and ferns, and are proficient climbers. Even the largest males are capable of at least clumsily getting into high enough branches that they can sleep out of range of predators like cockatrices and young megaraptorans. Compared to their earth cousins, they are fairly gracile and have stronger curved claws. Their arboreal traits lead many to suggest that they might be hybrids of sun bears, but later genetic studies suggest minimal hybridization with other bear species harvested at the same time. They have an astonishing range, being found on both continents and most islands, and are even present in and near many settlements. They can be quite dangerous, and though skittish, they rank among the most numerically dangerous animals to chimerans, as their comfort near settlements leads to proximity and reliance upon humans for food that so often leads to man-eaters. Like others of the genus Ursus, uku bears have a notable sexual dimorphism with sows rarely exceeding 200 pounds, and males occasionally doubling that. Their ecological rivals, and indeed the reason behind Chimere's minimal bear diversity, is the Wojun, or Red Sloth. These mylodont sloths are protected by tough hide and osteoderms in their skin, affording potent defense from rear attacks, and their claws and tusks mean that they are not attractive targets for a frontal assault. While they tend to amble about, they can make short bursts at a gallop of 25 miles per hour, which they can use to chase off predators or competitors, and in some cases, even catch prey. Like most mylodonts, they are omnivores and are the most carnivorous species. The sloths of the prairie subsist almost entirely on carrion, or slow-moving game, during the dry season. In other regions, their diet is predominantly leaves or fish, berries or grass, Ferns and horsetails are just about the only thing off the menu, which is why they and common drakes cohabitate so well when the sloth has such a low tolerance for other herbivores in their habitat. Sows are much smaller than the boars, and like uku bears tend to sleep in trees, something wojun boars are generally too large to do. While not nearly as proficient burrowers as some of their cousins, such as the hukogor, wojun do make burrows, especially the males too large to climb trees. The burrow of a Wojun is featured in Fire in the Shadows, second short story in my first anthology. Red and black sloths and uku bears share territory and are direct competitors, but the bear tends to fare better in regions where Wojun populations are lower, to such a degree that after Wojun hunts, the bears will spike in population in a matter of a few years. 
Although at first glance it seems sloths are the reason for such minimal bear diversity, recent naturalists have proposed that instead it is the uku that is responsible, with their extreme adaptability allowing them to monopolize any niche opening left by the sloths and meaning other bears introduced after them had nowhere to go. There is one other species of bear in the known world, a massive cave bear in the Arvella Highlands. While the uku bear and black sloth are both found in this habitat, it seems the absence of a giant theropod or vassal predator means that these large terrestrial bears were able to establish a foothold. The cave bear is almost exclusively herbivorous, and while they were harvested just as the region became too cold for the wojun, but before the black sloth took its place. Although assumed to be descendant of Ursus speleus, the cave bear of later Pleistocene, they are in fact descended from Earth's cave bear's ancestor, Ursus deningeri. Cave bears seem to be relatively rare in their modern range. Fossils suggest that once ranged throughout the Kajarath Peninsula, but were gone before the arrival of the first children. Some suspect that they may be gradually being outcompeted as the black sloth becomes more common, a seemingly common trend in Chimerian history. As the black sloth overtakes the cave bear, the uku bear is becoming more common in the highlands, further supporting the theory that uku bears do quite well for themselves as the underdog below the sloth, and tends to thrive whenever their supposed rival does well. A third species of bear has only recently been described by Chimera naturalists. Long thought to be a misidentified sloth or hyenodont, the Uru Guitar or Hunter Sloth is a Tramarctine bear that has evolved to be a hunter of mammals in the inland sea. The similarities to polar bears, but in this tropical context, has resulted in some assembly naturalists somewhat humorously calling them the tropical polar bear, despite a much closer relationship to the spectacled bears of Earth. While they aren't common in waters of the known world, they do stock the northern islands, hunting seals, sloths, and desmostylians. Their fossils have been found in the seagrass meadows of the known world, but disappear around the time of the arrival of the saltwater crocodile. The Uru Guitar may have come to an ecological understanding with the saltwater caiman which occupied the niche before, but when the crocodile came to the known world, their more aggressive and generalist predators may have outcompeted both bear and caiman. The Moduru, a giant monitor lizard alongside the Alar, a semi-aquatic megaraptoran, have shared the top predator niche of these islands, but now saltwater crocodiles are their only significant competitor and the Uru Guitar is relegated to a small population north of the Kentarim Islands. While the bear might be better at killing same-sized marine mammals, it appears that the crocodile, needing about half as much food to grow twice as large, was able to dominate them in enough kill sites with enough regularity that they pushed the last of the marine bears to the brink of extinction. Despite steep competition in their niches, and having minimal diversity, with the two of the three surviving species being endangered, the uku bear has proudly broken the trend and thrives as one of the most common medium-sized omnivores in the known world. Cheers to Austin for sponsoring this episode. There's been a lot of interest in bears and chimere, and as I recently updated the uku bear, it was exciting to explore them further. Austin has been working on a project of his own, the Paleo Zookeeper Association. He and I have been working on some art for his YouTube channel, which I will link below. As of this recording, he only has a trailer, but based on what he's told and commissioned from me, I'm really excited to see where this project goes. Next week we will begin a three-part series on pterosaurs and chimere, and after that, I'm going to switch to every other Tuesday as a regular release for the next couple months since I'm starting up the next anthology and I'm finding myself pressed for time. Weekly episodes will eventually resume, certainly by May when I have a five-part series on elephants, but I figured I would give y'all the heads up. Thanks again to Austin, cheers to my Patreon patrons for your continued support, and gratitude to all of you for watching. Cheers, folks! <laughs>